Today, I want to explore the sugar to adrenaline pipeline and why eating sweets and lots of carbohydrates will end up stressing you out. Let's dive in. First thing is first, sugar isn't always table sugar. It's not always about honey and maple syrup and sweeteners and cupcakes. Sugar is also something known as starch. Whenever you have a refined carbohydrate, meaning something that was once a whole grain or a whole bean or a whole potato and has now been turned into something that you find in a bag or floured, you have high levels of starch. Starch is what exists inside of these whole foods. So let's look at a grain of rice. You'll notice the external layer has something called a hull, then the bran, then the endosperm or the starch. White rice is just endosperm, meaning just starch. Whereas brown rice has the bran and the germ, which is where a lot of the nutrients and the fiber exist. When you have fiber attached to a starch, you have a much slower conversion of starch to blood sugar. Now, obviously sodas and candy bars and cupcakes are going to have a massive spike to your blood glucose. Up, but so will these starches that have had the fiber removed from them. So we're talking breads, pancakes, muffins, pastas, french fries, potato chips. These foods are all powdered carbohydrates that mostly contain starch and very little fiber, meaning you get a hit of blood glucose very quickly after eating these foods, sometimes within 10 to 15 minutes. So once you have a glucose spike, your body responds with an insulin spike. And the primary role for insulin is to remove all that extra glucose from your blood. And it puts it into fat cells, it puts it into muscles, it stores it in your liver, so they can use it later on when you're starving. It's a starvation method of storing calories and glucose so that your body can use them later on when you're not able to find food. Now let's pause here. This is why people have issue with fat loss because the food, the calories, just keep getting stored as fat the glucose keeps getting converted into a triglyceride, into a fat, and stored in your body because you never go into a calorie deficit when you're consistently snacking and eating refined carbohydrates. So let's go back to insulin. Once the insulin has effectively removed the glucose out of your bloodstream, guess what happens next? Your glucose drops. It falls rapidly, and now you have low blood glucose. And this triggers a survival response from none other than the adrenal glands. Yes, the same adrenal glands that are responsible for causing your stress response, your fight or flight response, your trauma response, your panic, and your anxiety. And they do this because they need to make a lot of adrenaline because adrenaline forces the liver to give up its stored glucose, which we call glycogen. And when it gives up that stored glucose, your body now has ample glucose in the blood for your brain, your cells, and your muscles to feed off of. So the sugar to adrenaline sequence is actually quite simple. Blood sugar spike causes an insulin spike, which causes a blood sugar drop, which causes a spike in adrenaline to then excavate and pull out that stored glucose in your liver so your levels can come back up to a balanced place. So this is important to understand because when you eat starchy foods, which we tend to eat to comfort ourselves, we're actually going to have a subsequent stress response pretty quickly, sometimes within 90 minutes to two hours. And this is why we keep needing more starchy foods to settle ourselves or more sugar to comfort ourselves, which just creates another subsequent adrenal response. So how do you get in front of this sugar to adrenaline sequence? I want you to add a half a cup of beans and one to two cups of either raw or steamed green vegetables. Have these two things first and then eat your meal, especially when there's starches on your plate. These high fiber foods are gonna slow down the conversion of glucose in your small intestine into your bloodstream and help you prevent this whole sugar to adrenaline pipeline by preventing a blood sugar spike. When blood sugar is slowly going up, it's not gonna create a massive spike in insulin, which is not gonna create a massive drop, which won't stimulate your adrenal glands. Keep watching my videos, keep learning from me, and as time goes on, you'll learn many other methods at interrupting this cycle so you're not stressing your body out from what you're eating. This is important because some of you have enough stress to deal with in your lives. Let's not add to it based on our food choices. 
Thank you for watching today's episode. Please like and subscribe if you found it useful, and let me know in the comments what you want me to cover next. I have developed a four-week self-paced course that takes 18 years of my personal and professional experience and puts it into one place where you can easily and quickly learn the foundations of recovering from stress and trauma. How does the food you eat affect your stress levels? How do the relationships in your life create stress or peace? How does the relationship you have with your body allow you to feel happier and more settled? I will cover all this and so much more in this four week self-paced course. And the best part, it's self-paced. You don't have to sign up at a certain date or finish it at a certain time. It's yours for life and it's waiting there for you when you're ready to finish it. Throughout this course, I'll be teaching you philosophies and practices that combine my three favorite modalities, somatic experiencing, embodied parts work, and nutrition. For more information on this course, click on the link in my episode details.